the girl a runnin' in our group. She had a high-speedin' motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hot Rod and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. She's my hot rod. Talk to John from Avanti. Avanti John, what's happening? Hey, Big George. How you doing, buddy? How are you, man? All right. Hey, a couple quick thoughts. Uh, about a month ago, I heard an a engineer from Ford talking about their uh, autonomous cars that they're building and, and testing and, and want to get on the road. And you know how they have them now where they have a, uh, they're doing the testing, they have a driver sitting behind the, the steering wheel, and, and he's there for like a safety factor to hit the brakes or whatever. Well, the, the new cars that they're going to uh, test and want to put on the road will not have a steering wheel, will not have a brake pedal, will not have anything in there. It'll be like a, a, a you know, a kitty car. Well, even a kitty car has pedals on a steering wheel. I was going to say, it's, it's, uh, does that sound safe to you? I mean, in any way? <laughs> I mean, not, now, then they're talking about making a, no steering wheel. They're going to give you a, the driver a joystick. You want to give yeah. a, you want to give a shaky old guy like me a joystick to drive with? <laughs> you got to be kidding me! I mean, I could I couldn't do it. I couldn't use a joystick when it was Pac Man. I couldn't win, play the Pac Man game, and now you're telling me I got, I got to drive my car with one? Oh no, John, that can't be. Oh. And, and you and you know Ford about those pickup trucks with the transmissions? That sounds pretty bogus to me. I think you know they they don't they don't put a transmission in a vehicle and produce and have it for production. And then tested. They did millions of miles of testing before some problem has cropped exactly, up. John, that's that, exactly, John. That's exactly what that, that. That's exactly what that whole article meant. Is they have a problem? problem. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and, and then they're gonna. Whoa! We can't put this out there now. We got to fix this that we didn't see coming. Yeah. Ten speeds. Think about it. They're trying to get the gas mileage. They're trying to accomplish fuel economy with more transmission speeds. Right. I got a. I got a six speed in my car. My 2015 Edge, and I can't stand. It's always shifting. That thing okay. is either up, yeah. down, or around. It's always shifting. Every time I, well, it, I'm used to driving a car that shifts three times and you're done. There you go. <laughs> I have uh, my favorite teacher, Leon Simon from Lowell High School. Good morning, George. Yeah, and we have uh, Javier Rivera from Ivy Tech Community College. Now this is this is a treat for me, Javier. Ivy Tech is somebody I've tried to get on the air. I've, I've talked to people. You guys have been in the process of rebuilding your whole automotive scene. I mean, tell, tell our fans what's going on at Ivy Tech because I'm excited. I'm very excited. Good morning, George. Good morning. Um, we're very excited uh, to have the opportunity to be here this morning. And uh, the program is not what it used to be. Uh, just like cars have been changing, we've been revamping the program and um, new equipment. Uh, new curriculum and trying to keep up with the uh, the new cars the new technology uh, so we've invested uh, quite a bit of money uh, to update all the equipment uh, scanners for uh, diagnostics uh, alignment machines uh, for the undercar uh, oh the four-wheel alignments and stuff that's hot right, right now that's right, very yes. hot yeah so we're using snap-on uh, we're partnering with snap-on um, Can't beat that. Right. To bring the technology that the uh, technicians required to date in order to understand uh, the vehicles that are on the road and to repair them uh, correctly. So the curriculum is uh, it's written around the, uh, the equipment and the, uh, the new technology that's out there. And basically, you know, we, we use uh, uh, online training along with uh, classroom and hands-on. You know, Javier, it's so important. My trade, and I, my beloved car world, I call it, is so desperate for qualified technicians. Now, Leon, you got them in high school level. I do. And um, you're, they're, you're sending them from you to him. Right. We're partnering with the Ivy Tech, and they're sharing their curriculum with us so we can get their feet wet using some of the same books and the same lessons so that when they get down to Javier, they kind of got a clue what's going on and uh, are ready to go. You know, at the top of the show, I, I was talking, I was rambling, of course, about this is not, it's not the car business like that of your father and your grandfather. It's not what it used to be. It requires education. There's a lot going on it in It requires cars. Leon and Javier. It requires Ivy Tech and Lowell High School Technical right. Center. And it, it, because that's what it is. You can't. You can't come to me as a, I'm a business owner and I'm looking for a mechanic. You can't come in here and tell me that you've been tinkering with cars all your all your life and you're really good at it. 
Hey, you, no, you're not. <laughs> there's no, a lot you're not. to learn. I, there's way too much to learn. Yes. This is a, not just a trade, it's a career. Yeah. And when they walk out of Ivy Tech, I'm going to tell you right now, Javier, when you got a guy that you send me a guy that comes out of your program with credentials, he's looking at 40 to 50 grand a year to start. Right. And it goes up from there. I got technicians making much more than that, and there's and it's easy to do if you're trained. Yeah, right. And with our partnership with Ivy Tech now, guys are walking out of Lowell High School with some credits already out of the way in in Javier's program. That's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. They're getting on the road. They're they're learning a career. This is the and it's so important that we get some qualified technicians out there because these cars are really getting top notch. They are a lot going on. We're we're this is an exciting time to be in the car business. Of course, you guys have to change stuff daily. Right. You know, your curriculum is <laughs> I can't imagine how you keep up with it. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Well, no. with listen to your show, we get a lot of tips, the stuff that you sort through, and then I get a lot of stuff from the university here that they get, and they pass it on to me. So it, it, it takes all of us to work together to keep on top of this. Well, if we don't, we're just it's going to pass us by. Right. And then guess what? The, the, then there's nothing left, and who's going to fix the cars? Right. I just I had a story here I saved. I one of the stories I was going to talk about at the beginning. There is a uh, the rising demand for workers experienced in autonomous vehicle engineering has resulted in an unconventional training ground for new talent. There are certain cars are, are online are offering, or it's very unconventional actually, not even online, uh, a, a degree in autonomous engineering. Wow. For, and it's a mini degree of sorts, but BMW, Mercedes, everybody's behind this. Nadia, NVIDIA, Electrobit, they're all trying to get these young people involved in the autonomous driving. And, of course, it is the future. You know it, you know it, mm -hmm. I know it. Right. So now you have to know the mechanical and the electrical. Exactly. You have all. to know how to fix the brakes, and you have to know how to fix the sensor that makes it turn the wheel. Right. Because right. some of these cars don't even come with a steering wheel anymore. <laughs> it's going to be wild. Right. I had a, I had a, a, a listener a couple of years ago, called me up and told me I was crazy that his car did not have a steering column in it. Mm -hmm. I said, it doesn't. It, it, go look under the dash. There's no steering column there. Mm -hmm. You have a sensor that tells the steering box what to do. That's It's, it's called drive-by-wire, steer-by-wire. Uh, you don't have a throttle cable anymore. You have a, Everything's a sensor. Yeah, it was a big deal when that Corvette went to the... There's no actual cable going to the engine for the gas pedal Absolutely. anymore. You're relying on that electrical signal. Absolutely. Uh, technology is, just, but it, and it's going so fast. You have to keep up with it, but I think technolo technology is going to reach the point where it's going to have to level off and perfect what they have. Right. Uh, the, the autonomous driving, that's a great idea. It's going to save a lot of DUIs. It's going <laughs> to save a lot of wrecks. Yeah. It's going to save uh, the body shops will be hurting because there's not going to be a lot of fender benders or bumping the rear end and whatever. But <laughs> I got to tell you, if, if it's going to drive off the side of the road with a glitch, yeah. I don't want to be in it. I drove the autonomous Tesla uh, a couple weeks back, and uh, it did take some getting used to. I, I was covering the pedal, and I was covering the steering wheel. And uh, you have to cue it still. It just doesn't uh, type. You're not typing in or saying, hey, I need to go to Strax on the boulevard. You still got to kind of cue it. Uh, the ones that are up and coming are more. It'll just do everything for oh, you. Oh, Uber! Uber has perfected a car in Google that, and they've got millions of miles in California on these autonomous cars. Google has. Yeah. Uh, they've only had a few incidences. One where the the computer in the Google car thought that it had the right of way over this bus. Right. Well, try and tell a CTA bus driver <laughs> oh, yeah. he's got to let you in. Yeah. He doesn't have to let you in, and he's not going to. Javier, I'll tell you right now. Well, so, I'll tell you what, I got used to it. About after 15 minutes, I let the thing drive me around the Crown Point Square, and it was breaking with greater distance than I was. I was covering a little bit too close, and. I started to trust it, so it was, I, it was weird. I don't know. I just have this picture in my mind of two <laughs> autonomous vehicles in one of those roundabouts <laughs> right? going around in circles because yeah. they don't know where to go. Yeah. I just, you got to laugh. Javier, how do, how do, how do kids, if they, I'm sure it'll have to have a little bit of training in high school, but if they don't, if they decide they want to get into the automotive field, can they just sign up at your school? How do they get involved? Sure. Well, the students would come in, and uh, our curriculum is sequenced in a way that uh, it starts with the basic automotive class, where you get introduced to many different subjects, and uh, then it, from there you take electrical one and two, uh, which is the main thing now. Uh, electrical is oh. covers everything, you know. 
if you talk about brakes, there's electrical involved. If you talk about anything on the vehicle, there's nothing. There's right. nothing that's not electrical on that vehicle. So we se uh, sequence the uh, the curriculum to allow the students to learn progressively and get adapted to the technology. If they can learn electrical and di drivability, they're they're golden. Right. Right. So and, and the the scanners are involved in pretty much everything also with you know with the diagnostics on on all the systems on the vehicle which uh, comes in handy for them and at, at least they, they know how to use the equipment they know how to how, how to uh, do the uh, basic diagnostics and that's a big help and they they can build on their experience level wherever they go absolutely i see it i see it every day People come by with a check I have a check engine light, and I, I read over the parts store, and they read that I, I got a code for an oxygen sensor, how much to put one in. I, right. I won't do it. Yeah, I, I, I scanned. Because uh, it might not fix it. Yeah, I have I, to tell you, it might, probably a vacuum hose off. Yeah. Yeah. I, I scanned a, an Impala the other day, and it actually gave me a code for a, a low brake fluid. I was like, oh, yeah. wow. I'm like, you know. But uh, that, that's the kind of thing that you, you know, it monitors all the systems. Oh, yeah. I have a, I, well, yeah, I can tell you if the, this had wide open throttle. I mean, I could tell the parents, hey, <laughs> Junior here is not behaving. <laughs> Her hot the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> right. he, he's hot rodding your grocery getter, <laughs> you know, your, your edge. He's hot rodding an edge for But God it sake. is a skill set change. Like Javier said, I get guys, they're coming in expecting to do mechanical things on bolt and use wrenches and, and now they're having to use computers and diagnose circuit problems and use multimeters and it's kind of changing that mentality right. and that skill set and it, it's tough it's a tough transition so when guys want to just get in there and start wrenching there's always going to be nuts and bolts there are there's always going to be a hands-on nuts and bolts uh, availability but to be an all-around technician you got gotta to get both. into the electronics yeah. of it and that's where we your do. school comes in javier yes. you're the you're the final touch. You're the icing on the cake. Yes, right. right. And, you and know. we we try to get the the student to uh, to learn and uh, in in a way that at their pace. Uh, we do a, a lecture lab uh, sequence where you know we spend some time in the classroom, go out into the lab, and actually let them uh, touch a car. We have you know five six cars that belong to the college that they can tear apart, put back together. Um, that, that's absolutely that's right. absolutely perfect. You know, uh, we're gonna take a break, but we come back. You guys have put a ton of, of improvements into that program. I want to hear all about it. Tell me all about it when we come back. And uh, Javier, you guys at Ivy Tech have just done like a a ton of renovation and upgrading. And tell tell us about what the, what. Jeez, oh man, you guys spent a lot of money too. Whew. Yes, yes, but well, that's we what it takes money, right? And so, uh, like I said earlier, we partner with Snap-on and uh, revamped uh, the equipment. Uh, you know, we also added some uh, trainers that we use in class. Uh, we simulate electrical problems and we can actually put a fault into the trainer and have the students diagnose the problem. Uh, so it kind of opens up their, uh, their process of thinking and uh, what they need out in the field to actually diagnose That's problems. That's so important. I mean, right. it's absolutely <laughs> critical. So many people come, come to work for me and tell me they can fix electrical and they can't. They right. just can't. Right. And, and electrical is one of those things that kind of kind of gets people in, in, in a corner and, and they don't know, you know, how to how They're to think it, it through. So They're afraid of yeah. it. So if, if we can at least teach them that particular uh, skill set, you know, and able to uh, diagnose electrical problems. Oh, you uh, know, it, it, worth it, their weight in gold. Right, right. In the field. They really are. Right. So Trainers, that, what do those things cost? Uh, Probably we spent somewhere upwards of a hundred thousand dollars in trainers. Wow! Uh, in in order to and we have trainers that simulate uh, the uh, HVAC system in the vehicle. We have trainers to simulate uh, wipers and the washer system, the uh, uh, power seats, power door locks, fuel system. Um, we even have an air brake uh, simulator that you know also helps them with uh, nice. air brakes. You know that's why I was going to ask you, Javier. Do you have a diesel program there also? We do not. Uh, the closest diesel program is Kokomo, Indiana, that we have, uh, which is part of the Ivy Tech. And I, I just wanted to, to let everyone know out there that uh, you know, Ivy Tech, actually, we cover the entire state of Indiana. Uh, there's 10 campuses that actually do automotive uh, in the Ivy Tech system. And uh, we have everything from um, high, um, high performance in Indianapolis. Uh, they do uh, trucks. We do uh, motorcycles. Uh, but East Chicago does uh, automotive technology strictly. We used to have an auto body program back in the day, but uh, 
you know, of course, you know, things changed. And, uh, uh, with the uh, autonomous cars, you're not going to need a body right. man. So <laughs> hopefully. We're, we're concentrating on the automotive program, and, you know, we've uh, spent uh, the time and the, and the money to bring the program uh, uh, into the uh, uh, into the 21st century, if you want to. Oh, <laughs> tell me about it. It's yeah. got, you guys, it, it's so expensive. Yes. Everything and plus, the, well, of course, the tra and snap on equipment. You can't get much better than that. Let's we got a call here from Vinny on line one. Vinny, what's up, my friend? Hey, Big George, how you doing? Hi, how Javier, you? how are you? Good. How are you, Vinny? I'm doing good. Javier, um, um, what I what I was um, wondering, I, I'm just missing, you know, listen to your, you know, listen you know, to your program here. Um, when these uh, students graduate, do they go on uh, to dealerships? Or do they just like go on to like maybe um, like where Big George works at, like at Unlimited Auto? They have different options. Um, I have students that work at different dealerships uh, throughout the area, um, and actually some of them uh, may even continue on to uh, you know, like a four-year school. Um, or uh, but uh, you know, uh, independent repair shops like like uh, the, the shop where George uh, employs uh, technicians, um, they they can go pretty much anywhere. And the thing is that they they prepared for an entry level, and depending on the um, the student's ability, you know, some may actually end up at dealerships or better paying jobs than uh, entry level. But at least they can do the the most of the basic functions in the, in the uh, repair shop. They're ready to go when they come out. They're ready to go to work. Yes, ready to make a that living. Is, that is great because it's like a it's like a dying breed out here uh, with uh, technology, you know. And I'm just uh, glad that you're. Uh, what you do, Javier, uh, maybe, you know, taking some of these young kids off the streets and learning them a trade, uh, that would be, you know, that, you know, that's wonderful what you're, you know, what you're doing. You know, and everybody, Vinny, everybody's afraid of electricity and afraid of electronics and the new technology. But if you go to school at Ivy Tech or, or Lincoln or at the Lowell High School or whatever, or Ivy Tech, yep. you go to school and get the knowledge, you don't have to be afraid of anything anymore. Not at all. Because you know what you're doing. Exactly. And we're starting at the high school level to partner with Ivy Tech and other institutions so the guys get the basics so they're ready to go when they get to the, the trade school or the university level. And, and, and for any student that's interested or someone that wants to take automotive classes, um, when you come into Ivy Tech in East Chicago, um, you'll be met by the people at the Express Enrollment Desk. And basically all you need to do is just talk to them. They can help you fill out the application, financial aid. It's meant to just make it a one-stop shop for the students and, you know, allow them to give, uh, to be comfortable in that environment. And uh, they'll see that uh, the process is not as complicated as they may Absolutely think. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah, Vinny, you know, we're going to have some qualified technicians out there, and they're going to be local boys. Right, and at Lowell High School, we're having the dual credit, and we're doing a lot of that administrative work where they're already signed up and enrolled before they even graduate. So when they graduate, it's not, well, what am I going to do now that I'm graduated? They're already enrolled in Ivy Tech. They've Perfect. already got some credits out of the way. They've met Javier, and they're they're on the road to success. There you go, Vinny. You're going to have some qualified people out there. Thanks for calling, buddy. You too, and I want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and Sandy. Merry Bye -bye. Christmas to you. Yeah, Vinny's a good guy. Vinny and Sandy have been around, been listening for... Many, many years.